my dear friends in Christ welcome to our reflection for the 19th sunday a storm arose at sea and the ship was being tossed by winds and waves panic stricken the passengers ran helter skelter on the deck begging god to save them amidst the confusion Little Monica stared coolly at the tempestuous sea. Seeing the girl so cool and composed, a passenger barked, "Hey kid, aren't you afraid?" And Monica replied casually, "Why should I worry? Why should I be afraid? My daddy is the captain of this ship." Today's readings speak of winds and waves and of Christ, a captain's assurance, courage, its I. Our church in deep waters is symbolic of the church called to weather today's tempest of godlessness, globalization, materialism, fundamentalism, and individualism indeed christ the captain calls us to enter in our know, in depth and encounter the deep isn't that the same hand that held peter's hand ever ready to hold yours and mine god's peace is not the calm after the storm it's a steadfastness during it god's peace is not the calm after the storm it's the steadfastness during it a proper understanding of the gospel story of jesus walking on the sea has a lot to teach us of who jesus is jesus comes to us in our trials and tribulations He comes very calmly and quietly. He comes to us in silence. If we practice silence long enough, we may like Elijah sense God in the most surprising moments of our lives. Haruki Murakami says, and once the storm is over, You won't remember how you made it through, how you managed to survive. You won't even be sure whether the storm is really over. But one thing is certain: when you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person who walked in. That's what the storm is all about. Four monks decided to meditate silently without speaking for two weeks. By nightfall on the first day, the candle began to flicker and then went out. The first monk said, "Oh no, the candle is out." The second monk said, "Are we supposed not to talk?" The third monk said, "Why must you break the silence?" The fourth monk laughed and said, "I am the only one who didn't speak." Mother Teresa says we need to find God, and He cannot be found in noise and restlessness. God is the friend of silence. See how nature, trees, flowers, grass grows in silence. See how the stars, the moon, and the sun. how they move in silence we need silence like elijah in the first reading to be able to touch souls father john pichapalli reminds us villa kakada says there are some things you learn best in calm and some in storm some things we learn in calm some other things we learn in storm 
In the first reading, we meet Elijah the prophet hiding in a cave as he tries to distance himself from Queen Jezebel. Now he is directed to Mount Horeb, where he takes refuge in a cave. He wants to meet God and wishes this God to act powerfully against his enemies. There he discovers that his tactics are not God's tactics. Our ways are not God's ways and God's ways are not very often our ways. God is, God's approach is a non-violent one. Symbolizing by the mighty wind and earthquake in which he does not find God. Rather, it is a gentle breeze, a gentle one. Symbolized by the gentle breeze. Our God is so different from what we expect. Another quote says, I find God gently leading me back to the places. I can find him speaking, gently leading back to the places I can find him. In the middle of a dark winter's night in a small Midwest farming community, the two-story home of a young family caught fire. Quickly, parents and children followed their well-practiced emergency plan and made their way through the smoke-filled home out into the front yard. There the father quickly counted heads and realized that their five-year-old son was not among them. And suddenly he heard a wail, he looked up to see the son at his bedroom window, crying and rubbing his eyes. Knowing the danger of re-entering the house to rescue his son, the father called out, Jump, my son, I will catch you. Between sobs, the boy responded to the voice he knew so well. But I can't see you, Daddy. The father answered with great assurance. No, son, you can't see me, but I can see you. Jump. At that, the boy jumped into the smoky darkness and found himself safely cradled in his father's arms. Our scripture readings for today are about that trust, trusting, about having faith, about being able to discern the fact that our God is always with us, even in the storms of life. Sometimes God calms the storm, but sometimes God lets the storm rage and calms his child. The storm rage, but calms the child. In today's gospel, we read that Jesus sent his disciples in a boat and he went on to the mountain and was praying until three in the morning. Later, Jesus walked over the water and found his disciples fighting a losing battle again against the storm. Though he was present, fear engulfed them. His presence calmed the sea and gave them freedom from fear. The lesson in this passage is abundantly clear. As Matthew relates said, the story is clearly symbolic. The disciples in the boat represent the infant church. The wind and the waves represent persecution let loose on the church. Jesus is not with them physically. He is in heaven praying to the Father. However, in the church's direct need, when all seems lost, the Lord comes to save her. As we read in Deuteronomy 31, say, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified, for the Lord God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. 
It was in 1982. I was with some Italian Salesian priests waiting at Galilee in Israel for a boat ride across to Capernaum. A boat, ar- boat arrives apparently to take some American tourists across. We asked the boatman whether we could as well be accommodated in the boat. That be ten dollars each. He he demanded. One of the Italian Salesian priests in in our group was quick with his retort. These Jews haven't changed a bit. No wonder why Jesus had to walk on water. Athena Singh tells us, never trust your fears. They don't know your strength. Never trust your fears. They don't know your strength. The incident of Peter sinking and being saved by Jesus is probably a reference to Peter's failure during the Passion and his restoration after the resurrection. In any case, Peter represents the typical disciple caught between faith and doubt. The rebuke of Jesus, man of little faith. Why did you doubt? Is directed to us also, who often start out courageously, only to lose heart when faced with a crisis. Jack Confield says, "Love is based on our capacity to trust in a reality beyond fear, to trust a timeless truth bigger than all our difficulties." Bigger than all our difficulties. There's an old joke about three priests, uh, priest friends, on a boat out fishing one day. After a while, the Catholic priest says, "I have forgotten my smoking pipe," and gets gets up and walks on the water to the shore, and lighting his uh, his uh, pipe, walks back underwater to the boat. The rabbi couldn't believe his eyes. These followers of Jesus can do such a miraculous act like walk, walking on the water. Then the Hindu pujari says he's forgotten to bring his chewing pan and walks on the water and go to the shore and put the chewing pan, spitting through his finger, walks back on the water to the boat. The rabbi was amazed by the Hindu priests, and with their yoga and meditation technique, they can do such wonderful acts like walking on the water. He lifted his eyes, and Lord Yahweh, you be, we are the chosen people. You allowed Moses to walk through the water. Show to them, we are the chosen people. And he stepped on the water, and down he went. The other two priests had to lift him up and put him back in the boat. But he said, "You know, you test our faith. You tested Moses, and and I'm going to show that my faith is stronger." Steps on the water, and down he goes. And the other two priests pull him back and put him in the boat. And the Catholic priest turned to the Hindu pujari and asked him, "Didn't you didn't you show him where the rock path is under the water? There is peace." Even in the storm, Vincent Van Gogh tells us there is peace even in the storm. Peter's encounter with Jesus becomes a model for the church's encounter with God. Life tosses us about and makes us scream help, rather than saving. As by shortcut, Jesus appears in life storms and says, "Courage, it's I." His invitation follows, "Come." Are we ready as individuals and church to jump off the boat, leave the bandwagon, and abandon the crowd, and take that step? Remove any fear. Remove any of your fear with faith. Trust the power of God to guide you. Elder Russell Ballard tells us. We ask ourselves, 
is the lord to be found also in the chaos of doubts and confusion or hesitant faith can he still be found in the disorder of our time he is there in the storms and difficulties of the little world of our own heart in the wide divided and threatening world but it's hard to recognize him there if you really encounter the lord in faith in friendship and in deep love then the lord makes everything become quiet even when the storm winds keep blowing for the lord makes his presence felt let us keep trusting keep believing for the lord is here with us beyond all the storms confusion doubt and calamities around us let us pray god our father we believe in you in your love and your care but you know how our faith is often tried by doubts and uncertainties and fears make our faith strong enough to believe that your son jesus is with us to revive our faith and to give us the courage to live with risk and doubts and ambiguities and to confirm in their faith our sisters and brothers in need keep us hoping and let jesus take us by the hand and lead us to you a god and father forever and ever amen god bless